Okay. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks very to, to Mark and also thanks uh, to, to Toro. My name's Bradley Brown. I'm the uh, Acting National Manager for Strategic Intelligence and Policy at, at Austrac. So I'm going to give you a short overview of uh, what we do uh, and then really touch again on, on elements that are relevant to the uh, fintech space. Um, I'm sort of going to take us in a, in a little bit of a different direction as well to, to, to my fellow regulators because we're not solely a regulator. So we are certainly about, about numbers though. Um, last year we received 96 million transaction reports uh, to Austrac. Uh, they were valued at $4.6 trillion. Uh, of, of the 96 million transactions that we received, over, over 81,000 of those were suspicious matter reports. Um, of those, 536 of those uh, were actually assessed and considered of relevance to the financing of terrorism in Australia uh, and, and equated to a value in the order of some $53 million. Uh, we have 3,500 law enforcement users who access our database on a daily basis to help them with their, with their investigations. Uh, in the last 10 years, we've assisted the Australian Taxation Office to uh, collect an additional $2.5 billion in, in revenue for Australia uh, and we've also assisted law enforcement and our fellow regulators in thousands of major investigations into a serious and organised crime, uh, crime in this country. In terms of our regulated population, uh, there is over 14,000 reporting entities that uh, have responsibilities and are regulated by Austrac. Uh, and approximately 4,600 of those are people who provide remittance services, to, which means they sort of transfer money in and out of Australia. So as Australia's financial intelligence agency, uh, our, our core function is to collect and disseminate actionable fi financial intelligence to both domestic and international partners. So as it has on the screen, we, have, we work with 40 45 different domestic agencies, 3,500 people who are using our, our system and 83 jurisdictions internationally uh, to share intelligence information which may assist in, in our investigations uh, and theirs, but also constantly to consider how we may improve uh, our system and theirs in terms of the exchange of financial intelligence. So in support of our intelligence activities, we are also the anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing regulator. So in that role, we educate, supervise, and where appropriate, we enforce uh, the obligations under the AML CTF Act. A an important consideration in that perspective is, is that we want to get the best out of the information that we receive. So we're, we seek from businesses to improve the reporting that they do uh, to Austrac to actually help lift those numbers that, uh, that I mentioned earlier on. Collectively, as an, ag as an agency, we're, we are driven uh, by our vision of a financial system that's free from criminal abuse. Um, and, and there's been some significant change and restructure within Austrac in the last couple of years, in the last uh, 18 months or so. Uh, and so we're certainly living by, by the mantra at, at present of, of collaboration, collaboration with our fellow regulators, collaboration with industry. Um, and we're also driven by something that you're driven by, and, and that's innovation. Just in terms of our, of our legislative mandate, uh, the AM, the Anti-Money Laundering Counter-Terrorism Financing Act, I'll abbreviate it now to AMLCTF because I'll take up eight minutes if I keep saying it, um, designates certain, uh, certain services that are captured by our legislation. So they're principally financial services, remittance services, uh, gambling services and, and, and bullion. So that's the 14,000 entities that I mentioned. So a person that provides a designated service uh, has obligations under the Act for, to enrol with Austrac. If they're providing remittance services, they must register with Austrac. They have a responsibility to main, uh, maintain a program which uh, assesses and, and manages their money laundering and terrorism financing risk. They have responsibilities to report certain transactions to Austrac, the international funds transfer instructions, which make up a large number of the 96 million reports we get. Uh, but also threshold transaction reports. So if you walk in to the bank with over $10,000 in cash, that's reportable to Austrac and, and suspicious matter reports. And if you happen to be, uh, as a private citizen, entering or leaving Australia with more than $10,000 cash, you can all, you'll also have to provide a report to Austrac. 
and we're also required to uh, keep certain records. So why are we interested in, in, in fintech? Um, quite simply, our, our world is changing. Uh, and we are faced by uh, new and increasing terrorist threats. We have a global impetus to, to address corruption and enhance transparency, financial integrity and, and business misconduct. And unless people weren't on this planet in the last couple of weeks, I'm sure they would have uh, heard about the Panama Papers. Uh, we have an increasing complexity in the nature of serious and organised crime, which the Australian Crime Commission in Australia estimates costs the uh, Australian public. Uh, $36 billion annually. We have an expanding trade in illicit goods uh, and, and, and commodities. The digital transformation of, of the financial sector is occurring. That's why, it's why many of you are here. Uh, in Australia and elsewhere, there's a strong take-up of non-cash uh, payments. Uh, and in fact, in many countries, they're already talking about uh, cashless societies. These things are also changing just the way that uh, some of our uh, regulated population looks at their customers. So there's more customer-centric approaches to the, to the products, et cetera, which they're developing. We're also faced with uh, techno technological disruption. A again, areas which, uh, which many of you may actually be involved in. So we're seeing also major advancements in digital identity and, and biometrics, uh, which, which Fun, uh, fundamentals in terms of, of what the AML CTF regime does in terms of knowing your customer and, and customer due diligence. So this leads to some pretty some contrasting views. On one hand, and I think I just broke the door. On one hand, we see huge potential and, and opportunities in, in technologies uh, and what they mean for the consumer. So efficiency, uh, reduced cost, better choice, more convenience. Speed, I'm sure, I'm sure there are many additional things that, uh, that you'll be able to highlight. And what they mean for us is, is more intelligence, better capabilities, uh, equally reduced cost and efficiency. But on the other hand, each one of those is also a money launderer's and terrorist finance's best friend. As an example, uh, the New York Times actually released a report just last week in relation to the benefits of frictionless mobile payments. Uh, and, and particularly their ease of use. The report noted, however, that inherent to their design is the ability to structure larger payments into any number of smaller payments due to the elimination of transaction fees. So again, many of you might be thinking about this. So according to the report, 6,000 transactions involved weapons. And these were, these were major military weapons. So the, the weapons dealers were advertising their goods in private Facebook groups and taking orders and payments through Facebook's Messenger app. And it's just one of the many apps that offer the ability for users to send money. Importantly, these, these apps don't operate outside the financial regulations. And, and many of the app makers are actually trying their best to ensure that they are compliant. But what the system has produced makes it far easier for everyone to get paid. Uh, and I suspect far more difficult for the arm's length financial institutions for where the accounts come to actually monitor the transactions that, that are actually occurring. So as these payments are here to stay, um, it, it means that everything that businesses do to ensure their compliance with regulation, including their monitoring, including their alerting, including protecting of, of their own reputations, has to occur more quickly. Likewise, for us as an intelligence agency, we must respond quicker. So straight through processing, and real-time reconciliation of, of payments, which we certainly are aware uh, will occur, will require increasingly effective inbuilt compliance, risk detection, and, and reporting. So what this has meant for, for Austrac is, is pretty much an undeniable realization um, that our response requires something different. So we are looking at really unprecedented relationships, unconventional, uh, innovative approaches to how we regulate, uh, how we do our work in terms of an intelligence agency. And part of that is actually building what we would think is, is very much non-traditional partnerships. We, we have very much had partnerships with, uh, with major institutions, etc. So we need to, in the same way that, uh, that you guys are thinking, 
actually look at disrupting and challenging the traditional regulatory model that we think that, uh, that we currently operate under. So we, we, are, con we are convinced of the, of the focus on, on smart regulation and, and what, that, what that means. And, and our considerations on that is really about how we can better integrate regulation up front in the development stage uh, of technologies. So how can we help the fintech sector? Well, we are committed to, to collaborating with, with our fellow regulators in relation to the, to the regulatory sandbox to, to enable what that may provide in terms of, of benefits um, and, and reductions in sort of initial regulatory cost. Uh, we, like uh, ASIC outlined and Mark outlined, already do provide exemptions and, and relief from the, uh, the AML CTF legislation. And, and we have had approaches from uh, fintechs uh, in, in relation to that. So we're actually aiming to move into a position and, and a, a regulatory model that actually promotes good compliance and actually rewards good compliance uh, by reducing regulatory burden. And that, what that will allow us to do is then focus our finite, finite resources on those people who are deliberately trying to manipulate the system and are deliberately trying to uh, impact the financial system of Australia. So we're very much prepared to provide advice or, on regulatory safeguards, risk mitigation at, at that point of development, uh, and for which we believe it will equally assist Austrac in terms of understanding technologies and for ourselves and for us to determine where the points of intelligence collection and information collection will be most relevant. So in, in this regard, uh, Austrac ha has been engaging and are, and are open to continued engagement uh, with fintech, fintech startups uh, at the development stage. We, we are very keen to assist uh, in influencing uh, regulatory mitigation of, of those risks at, at the outset. In other words, promoting good risk identification, uh, and if I use this word correctly, re reg tech, uh, prior to, to the conduct, uh, to prior to the products going to market. <coughs> this will hopefully produce, uh, reduce future compliance costs uh, if, if things go bad uh, after, after products go to market. One thing, and, and this is certainly apparent with the biggest institutions in Australia, and I expect it be, would be apparent with yourselves, is that I expect that no person wants to be on the front page of a paper knowing that their system has been misused and the facilitation of payments have led to a terrorist attack in Australia. So equally though, we are engaging uh, with, with fintechs in relation to our own development. And we're seeking to engage in terms of the numerous possibilities to achieve better outcomes uh, on several front fronts. Firstly, the identification, for example, for example, the digital and bio biometric uh, identification and verification, as well as potential public and private options in terms of, of, of know your customer, which, which again I say is a massive part of the uh, AML CTF regime. We're also looking at, at, at how FinTech and technological developments can help us with information capture and analytics. We're having a look at how that can help in terms of embedding privacy and security protocols, and I'm sure that might be looked at next. And also, just in terms of how we operate in terms of our compliance activities. So as a last note, I just want, uh, I want to encourage uh, access to the Austra Austrac website, uh, which has certainly undergone, again, substantial change more recently. So the site contains important information that may be useful to, to businesses that are just starting out. Uh, for example, points of contact, but apart from that, it contains a significant amount of risk information, uh, case studies in relation to money laundering and, and terrorism financing and other um, serious and organised crime. Austrac's compliance guide has also been rewritten uh, and will continue to be updated uh, and with a specific, um, with specific industry focus a, a, as we sort of move along. Uh, and as a, la uh, as a last point, it's not, it's not in my notes, but one of the most significant things that we have been undertaking in the last uh, two years is the review of our legislation. Um, so it's very likely that that uh, review uh, will be made public uh, sometime in, in the near future. And, and I would uh, suggest to, to, to everyone that it, it will be worth having a look at the, 
some 84 recommendations that that, that, that review uh, will, will be making in terms of Australia's regime and, and where it's going. So thank you very much. <laughs>